Mud's a complex mixture of some very important but sometimes dangerous chemicals. You've got to be careful when you're working around it. So far, we've covered a lot of important areas. What mud does, how to keep it clean, how to test it, and so on. But nothing's as important as your personal safety. And the way you mix mud has a lot to do with your safety and the safety of the people working around you. In this program, we're going to go over some of the ways that we'd like to see you mix mud and additives. Then in the next section, we'll take a look at the bulk storage and mud transfer systems so that you'll have some idea about how to get mud from one area to the next. When we start a new well, you'll generally get a whole new supply of additives for the mud system and supplies will generally be delivered to the rig throughout the drilling of the well. Some are going to come to you in bags and some will come in bulk form. First of all, we're only going to talk about those in the bags then we'll get into the bulk muds and where they're stored. This is the mud storage room on board the Sedco 471. Here's where organizing is important. On some rigs, you'll generally see a real mess in the mixing room. Bags thrown here and there. But on Sedco rigs, for the most part, you're going to find that our rooms are pretty straight. Sometimes they'll be awfully full, but the different types of chemicals and additives will be stacked in some logical manner so that you can find them and get to them pretty easy and safely. Look, here we've got it all stacked up with bentonite in one pile, lignite here, CLS over there. All easy to get to and it's stacked pretty neat. And when new bags arrive on the rig, it's usually time to try and rearrange a little bit. When you're arranging your inventory, you're going to want to put your more heavily used bags and those additives you'll need in a hurry closer to the hopper so you can get to them without wasting a lot of time. Stuff like bentonite, walnut hulls, and so on. The things that you don't use much will usually be put in the back of your room. Now when you get ready to do some mixing, there's some safety gear you'll want to put on. It's not for our good, it's for your own safety. Make sure you've got everything handy, a rubber apron and rubber gloves, rubber work shoes, and your goggles or face mask. Don't mix without protection for your eyes. And while we're on the subject of eyes, make sure you know where your eye wash station is and check it to be sure it's well stocked. You should have a buffered solution handy for an emergency just in case something gets in your eyes. Make sure you know exactly where all of them are so that you can find them with your eyes closed. You should have one at each of your workstations. If it's not stocked or it's been used, let the medic know. He'll usually replace the bottles on a regular schedule, but he probably won't check them every day, so you should. You'll be doing most of your mixing in two places, mostly from the hopper, which is in the bag storage room on most of our rigs. But some mixing will be done in the mud room at the chemical tanks. These tanks are mostly used for additives like caustic, Caustic has to be handled very carefully because in its concentrated powder form, it'll eat right through almost anything. Regardless of which way you're mixing though, be careful because a lot of these additives are dangerous if you get them in your eyes. At this hopper, you'll be mixing from bags and from bulk. There are a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're working around your equipment though. Let's start with the eductor. The eductor, or jet, is the part that does the blending of the powder and the liquid. The system is set up to either pump water or mud through a nozzle just below the hopper. The high pressure stream of water draws the powder from the hopper and mixes it in. Then it's dumped into whatever tank it'll be held in. Just above the eductor is a butterfly valve for closing the hopper off. There are some do's and don'ts right off that you need to know about. You can dump materials into the hopper from the bulk surge tanks faster than the jet can blend it. When you do this, you stand the chance of clogging the adductor opening because the dry powder could get moist near the opening and stick to the neck. That's going to slow you down and it's a mess to clean out too. And finally, bags and knives don't mix too good with our mud systems. 
be careful not to drop anything but additives into the hopper or you'll find yourself doing plumber's work. It's a good idea to tie your knife off with a lanyard. That way it won't accidentally fall down into your hopper and it'll be less likely to walk off in somebody else's pocket. So let's grab our first bag and add it. We know what to add because the mud engineer has told us. A few pointers on lifting. Be aware of what that bag weighs before you go picking it up. Size is deceiving. This little bag of bayrite weighs 100 pounds. When it's sitting next to a bag of bentonite, it looks like it ought to be a breeze to lift, but it's not. When you lift, always lift with your legs, not with your back. Keep your back and shoulders straight as you pick the bag up. And it's better to keep the bag below shoulder level and as close to your body as you can. It'll make it a lot easier on your back to carry it because all of the weight of the bag falls straight down the spinal cord and to your leg muscles where the lifting should be done anyway. Now for the hopper. Before you start your pumps, make sure that the hopper valve is closed off. Then you can turn your pump on to run mud through the jet. Open your butterfly valve slowly to make sure that the mud is flowing through the jet and to make sure you don't have a plugged line. If you don't have a flow, close the butterfly valve, then go check out the problem. When you've got it going, empty the bag at a good steady rate. Don't try to dump it all in at once. Add it so that it will blend with the water. With some additives, the mud engineer is going to ask you to add it more slowly. Here's one that they've asked us to add at the rate of about a bag per half hour. We've set it up so that it just trickles in. Every now and then, our mud man will check it to make sure it's still trickling in. If the mud engineer asks you to add, let's say, five bags of sepia light an hour, you don't walk over and dump in five bags and wait until the end of the hour to add the next five. What he means is that you add a bag every 12 minutes or so. One bag every 12 minutes equals five bags an hour. If he wants all five added now, he'll let you know. Remember, add your materials gradually over a given time frame. Don't dump it all in at once unless you're told to. Now let's look at something you'll probably be asked to use a lot of. Bayrite, your waiting material. When they ask for bayrite, they'll generally want it right now and they'll ask you for a bunch, like 3,000 pounds or something like that. Well, 3,000 pounds is 30 bags. That'd take a while to add. So rather than bother you with the bags, most rigs will store bayrite in bulk. That means it'll be stored in tanks rather than bags. These tanks are called P-tanks. Your P-tanks will generally store the bayrite, bentonite, and cement. These P-tanks are below deck on the 471 but most rigs will have them on deck or in the columns. There's valves and piping to get it from one place to another, but we're not gonna go over that right now. All you need to know at this point is that it can be directed to these tanks above the hoppers called surge tanks. Once a predetermined weight of bulk has been transferred to the surge tank, you're ready to run it into the system. Again, open the butterfly valve slowly Make sure your jet is flowing. Okay, you're ready to start mixing the bayrite or whatever it is you're adding. If it is bayrite, there's a good chance the mud already has bayrite in it. If it does, the mud might not mix as easy as plain water would, so you'll have to add it to the hopper a little slower. Usually the system will mix it pretty fast, but don't try to get ahead of it. Add it at a steady rate or you'll get a clog and it'll kick back up at you. Now, I can't overemphasize the importance of your safety gear. Bayrite's not real harmful, but it can be painful if you get it in your eyes. And look at this guy. He's really taking a chance. He ought to be wearing a face mask. In fact, it's Sedco policy. Also, look at how fast he's adding the Bayrite. He's trying to force feed it. Now, watch it back up on him. Well, at least he knows where the eyewash station is. Whenever you get anything like this in your eyes, hold your eyes open and douse them with the solution. Then, go have the medic check them to make sure you're okay. When you've finished adding materials to the hopper, be sure to close the butterfly valve. Then, clean the place up. Don't leave a mess. 
Clean the hoppers, valves, everything. And don't forget the floor of the bag storage area either. While we're talking about bayrite, let's talk a little about your kill mud. And in our pits right now, we have three types of mud. We have an active mud, we have a standby mud, and we have a kill mud. The kill mud is usually maintained at one to two pounds greater than the active mud, and is used to bring the well under control during a kick situation. That's in case of an emergency. It's also used for pumping slugs down the hole. Just before a trip, the driller will usually call you up and ask for a slug. Since the slug is heavier mud, it helps make the regular mud drain out of the pipe a little faster as it's pulled out of the hole. Hopefully, it'll help keep this from happening. Your slug comes from the slug or kill tank. Whichever it's called on your rig, this kill mud ought to be kept at a weight that's one to two pounds per gallon heavier than the weight of your working mud. Your driller will tell you exactly what he wants. Watch it all the time, though, and have it ready when the driller calls for it. Make sure you circulate the mud all the time, too, or all your bayrite will settle down to the bottom of the tank. And any time you increase the mud weight of your system, increase the weight of your kill mud, too. Now, earlier, we mentioned the chemical tank. Let's take a quick look at it. There are some additives that need to be added to the system a little more carefully than others, like caustics. Now, do you see anything wrong here? This is an experienced mud engineer, and he's thrown a bag of caustic over his shoulder. We showed you a few minutes ago how to carry bags properly. Don't do this. If there's any residual caustic on that bag, or if the bag has a hole in it, that caustic's going to get on your neck and face. If you add caustic too quickly to a bentonitic system, you stand the chance of flocculating the mud. Caustic has to be dissolved in water first, then you can add it to your system. This way it won't flocculate the bentonite so easy, and it'll mix more evenly too. Before you mess with caustics, you'd better learn a little about them. Now these caustics are really dangerous. They can burn the skin right off you. I remember about three years ago, we had a roustabout on this vessel who was mixing caustic into the mud. He was wearing all the correct protective clothing, except he had a pair of shorts on and he had his socks rolled over the outside of his boots. A couple of flakes of caustic got in between his sock and his foot and burnt. He felt a minor irritation at first, and within 20 minutes it was quite bad. He came to the rig hospital, and by that stage there was a third degree burn. He was sent to the hospital where they had to cut out all that dead tissue, and it was very lucky that he didn't have to have a skin graft. Wear all of your protective gear, your apron, your mask, your rubber boots, your gloves. Don't mix caustics without all this gear on. Locate your eyewash station and make sure it's ready for an emergency. Mix caustics one bag at a time. Fill the tank up with water. Don't dump the caustic in first. You always want to mix it into a full tank of water. Turn your mixing motor on so that you get a good circulation of water. Then you go get your bag of caustic. Be careful when you're picking your bag. Make sure the bag isn't torn or hasn't already been opened. And don't put an open bag back on the pile. If this stuff gets on your skin, well, just remember what the medic told you. Don't leave partially used bags sitting around. Add the caustic to the water carefully. Don't splash it. Mix the full bag. Don't mix partial bags. Let it mix in for a while. And don't leave any caustic sitting in the tank. Either use it all or dump it. Now let me caution you again about the dangers of caustics. They'll generally be about the most dangerous chemicals you'll be using. Don't mess with them without your protective gear on. If you get any on any part of your body, douse it with the solution in the eyewash station immediately. Then go see the medic for treatment. And once you've added it to the chemical tank, get rid of the empty bags. Don't leave them sitting around because somebody else might not realize what it is and pick it up with bare hands to throw it away. What's left in the empty bag is just as dangerous as what you just added.
Once it's mixed good, you can add it slowly to your mud system. Let's talk about something here. Some people are going to tell you that they just mix the caustics in the regular hopper. We don't want you doing that because it's dangerous. Caustics don't mix as good when they're added straight to the mud. They mix better in plain water. And you could flocculate the mud if you try to add it directly to the hopper. When your tower's over, clean your area up real good and be sure to clean your safety gear up, especially if you've been handling caustics. Everything's got a place where it goes, so be sure it's all put there for your relief. If you've torn your gloves or apron, get some new ones for the next guy. You should be able to get them from the warehouse. And at the end of your tower, take an inventory of your bagged additives. You'll have to get an accurate account of the additives you added during the day. This has to be reported to either the assistant driller or the driller for the IADC drilling report, so don't forget. And don't leave until you've been relieved. Whether you're taking a break or changing towers, everybody else thinks somebody's watching the pits. Just make sure somebody is. And when your relief shows up, make sure he knows what you've done and what he needs to do. That'll help keep things running a little smoother down in the pits. What we've dealt with here is probably the most important part of your job as a derrick man, working with the mud. And all these things are important. The organizing the inventory, the way you mix from the hopper and the chemical tank, how you lift the bags. But the most important part of all is your safety. And that goes right back to your protective gear and the eyewash station. That ought to help you out with mixing your additives in mud. In our next session, we'll show you how to transfer bulk materials, and we'll go over all those pumps and piping.